All right, all right, all right. So here's your bottom line up front for Fire Away, episode 51. This will be a completely groundbreaking and new type of episode for Fire Away. We have an Eastern Orthodox Catholic on this episode for the first time, and we'll be talking about a variety of topics. Race, cartoons, movies, video games, all with a delightful banter between a Catholic and Eastern Orthodox. It'll be fast-paced, so buckle up! Welcome. I'm Sebastian Maput, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on-air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom. What is your profession? Saddle up. Lock and lock. And when you have a feeling, spirit is Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. You're listening to Fire Away with Carlos Bursabe, brought to you by Catholic Ammo, En Route Books and Media, and WCAT Radio, where we're locked, loaded, and ready for battle with today's hot topics. Howdy, howdy, everybody. This is your host, Carlos Bursabe. You're listening to episode 51 of Fire Away. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe via iTunes or whatever platform you are using and give us a great rating. It's truly appreciated and helps a lot. So let's do a quick recap. On last week's episode, we had Chris Lewis from at Baratus Catholic, where we talked about how the images around us can have a real deep effect, not just on our emotional, mental, and physical well-being, but even more so, maybe, on our very souls. So if you missed it, give it a listen after this episode, but do it after, because today we're breaking the mold. I met Robert Lira, a.k.a. the Rob Star Graham from Instagram, and he said he was a graphic designer, too. What I found interesting was that he isn't Catholic, at least not the same type of Catholic I am. But enough about that. We'll get to that a little bit later. But before we go any further, let's go ahead and bow our heads in an opening prayer. Robert? Hello, brother. Uh, It is an honor to be on your show, and thank you for inviting me. And uh, let's begin with a prayer. Uh, It's from our prayer book. It's called A Prayer Before Commencing Any Task. Almighty God, our help and refuge, fountain of wisdom and tower of strength, who knowest that I can do nothing without thy guidance and help, assist me, I pray thee, and direct me to divine wisdom and power, that I may accomplish this task and whatever I may, I may undertake to do, faithfully and diligently, according to thy will, so that I will be profitable to my name, myself and others, and to the glory of thy holy name. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and now unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. So, how are you? <laughs> Doing all right. It's time to yeah. introduce you to the Fire Away Nation in great fashion. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the show... Robert Lira! Robert is a convert from Protestantism and has experience with multiple mainline Protestant denominations as well as various Filipino ethnic churches. He was received into the Orthodox Church in 2016. Robert attended Mount San Antonio College where he received his degree in liberal arts and has worked as a visual designer and web developer for over 15 years. He currently works for iVessor Creative, a photography and design agency, and resides in Southern California. Welcome for the first time on Fire Away, Robert Lira, a.k.a. at the Robstargram. What's been going on, brother? This is your first time on the show. <laughs> oh man, I'm 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 excited, brother. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm blessed to 
to be part of this uh, first podcast I've ever been on. So uh, hey, let's uh, let's do this, man. Yeah, you're the <laughs> you know? first person that we've ever had walk on music for. So think of yourself <laughs> as our, our honored guest. Wow, it is an honor, man, and very humbling. And uh, you know, thank you so much for uh, inviting me. And uh, I, I'm, I, I'm so glad I met you uh, on on Instagram. You know, I, I believe uh, nothing's ever uh, an accident with the Lord. So, you know, thank you. And, Absolutely, uh, man. So, is there anything yeah. else that you want to add to the introduction? Is there anything else our Fireway Nation folks need to know about you before we get crack a lacking? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I've been, uh, I've been, I started out as a graphic designer uh, uh, many moons ago, uh, around uh, 1995-ish. You know, I, actually, I started, I started as a photo retoucher in, in a photo studio back, uh, back when they were doing film. So I have the film experience. So I saw the transition in technology, and it's just been, uh, it's been crazy. You know, like uh, even the media. You know, like going from analog uh, paper. So I started as a production artist and uh, worked my way up in a corporate environment. And um, even, even uh, you know, kind of like what you said about the intro, walking on, I, I walked on into a Fortune 500 company. I, I was taking some uh, extension courses at uh, UC Riverside. And uh, back then it was like this brand new uh, silicon graphics computers. And uh, there were two people in the class, and they worked for a big corporation. And I had been working in a library for like eight years. And I was just like, okay, um, how, what's this job that you guys have offered? And so they, they wanted a graphic designer to join in. And kind of just uh, no experience, just kind of just met the right people. You know, I, I truly believe uh, relationships matter. And just like our relationship here, you know, uh, relationships still still matter. And especially now in this digital world of ours, you know, we – we think this is the real relationship, but you know what? Ultimately, it's like the uh, hashtag IRL, right, in real life, you know. So um, that brought me on to a Fortune 500 company, and um, uh, the owner was a uh, uh, Yugoslavian back when Yugoslavia was still a country, or it was it was kind of dividing with the Serbian War. Uh, and little did I know, you know, I was processing these photos for that for that group um, for their. Uh, public relations and the 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 owner of our company was actually a former um prime minister of yugoslavia whoa so yeah so here i am with a AA degree <laughs> I, I i shoehorned my way into this company because some people i knew helped me get in and uh, meanwhile you know all the mbas were <laughs> sitting in the uh uh, what department? Uh, the uh, customer service department. And they, had, they had all they, these guys all had MBA degrees, and, and here I am, just like kind of, you know, I, I kind of consider it like kind of like Kobe Bryant, right? You just come in there, you know, with your with your talent. <laughs> and uh, here, a former, uh, he had pictures of Bill Clinton with him and himself, and his name is uh, Milan Panic. And uh, so I'm I'm working this high powered position <laughs> in a sense, you know, I'm working with a world leader literally next door, you know. And um, just, uh, you know, through the grace of God, um, it was interesting because I was processing these images, getting back to that. Uh, and there was pictures of him and um, these Serbian patriarchs, you know, the, uh, the Serbian bishops. And I would look at these. Uh, and I, I, back then I was still a Baptist Protestant. So I would look at these uh, these guys in these funny, funny suits, right? Like uh, the uh, priest, priestly garments, they're cassocks. And I remember even thinking in my own head, Look at these idolaters, <laughs> and that was just from you know. For shame. Yeah, yeah. Lord, forgive me now. Uh, but you know, uh, that was my mindset. You know, being in a as a Protestant, I, I didn't understand that. So of course, you know, that's that's how we viewed anyone that was that's you know, any anything that that uh, smacked of Catholicism to us was a scandal. So you know, but lo, little did I know, you know, the Lord will take me full circle around there too. So. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's been quite a journey. And, uh, so I guess, uh, you know, kind of here we can, we can talk about like a retro, uh, retro video games, uh, pop culture and just kind of tie in all that and, and, and the life of experience, you know, I think, uh, you know, that, that ultimately is, uh, how we grow into the, uh, faith, you know, and, and it's not something that we think like, oh yeah, I, I read a book bam, I, I've arrived in the faith, you know, no, it's, it's a lifelong process. And, uh, kind of to take, um, I'm a big basketball fan. So, 
um, that one player, Joel Embiid, right? He has a saying, right? Um, trust the process. Trust so, the process. Hashtag trust the process, brother. <laughs> And that brings us, actually, you pretty much laid out the situation report. So let's go jump into it. All right. So you're talking about life experience and, and relating it to these different things and the faith. I got I to gotta talk about the elephant in the room. Um, what brings an Eastern Orthodox Catholic onto, you know, a Catholic podcast? I'm sure other people are wondering. They might be thinking that I'm thinking about jumping ship, which I'm not. But I do love, you know, anybody to come on the show. So I, I'm, I'm happy to hear your, a little bit more of that story, brother. Well, uh, yeah, let's uh, I, I would say I would say, you know what? Um, uh, I would I would leverage my uh, library experience when I when I that was my that was basically my after high school job. You know, instead of, work, you know, working at McDonald's, you know, I, I, I landed a job as a shelver in the library of a city library. And uh, one of the things that I've learned to navigate is that you, you meet all sorts of people in the library. And mm-hmm. I worked the clerk desk. I mean, we had the homeless in there. You had to, you had the crazy people, you know, people just released from the psych ward, you know, literally there. Yikes. I mean, yeah, I, I worked in an interesting environment. Um, we had the children's section downstairs. And uh, uh, let me just quickly tell you, there was a story one time, uh, one of the, uh, a stranger came down there and exposed himself to one of the children. And so someone complained upstairs and no one did anything about it. So I was, I was there like, you know what, you know, I just had the sense of justice back then, you know, <laughs> and I got angry. So I took a, I took a, one of our Polaroid cameras back when we had Polaroids. Right. Um, <clears throat> and I, I, I looked for the guy and I took a picture of him and then he started chasing me. And then, um, he's, uh, he, he, you know, and then I went back to the office, you know, and kind of just hid behind there. And then he threatened to, he basically threatened to, you know, have after work to try to kill me. <laughs> Holy smokes. You know, yeah. So <laughs> who would have thought, right? Library job, uh, high risk. <laughs> but anyways, um, you know, getting around to that. Um, uh, so you meet all sorts of people in the library. And, um, you know, even one time there was a, a girl, she was struggling with something and she, she checked out all these books on abortion. And, uh, you know, I always used to try to use the opportunity uh, for the Lord to use me. Uh, especially in a, as a clerk position, it, it's kind of interesting because you, you get to talk to different kinds of people. So it, to me, it was almost an evang- evangelism opportunity, you know, and, you know, but you had to slowly navigate that. You had to navigate that, that war- realm. So, you know, you, you're not overt, you know, cause I'm working for the city. I'm working for a government, you know, so I can't just, you know, blurt out, Hey, become a Christian or something like that. You know, that that's a no, no, you know, <laughs> with, 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 with that kind of environment. So, you know, even I I was even able to help someone out um, going through an abortion. You know, she she was struggling with it. And I kind of shared I what I did was I took her to the back and I I showed her some good books on uh, recovering from abortion because she had had one. Oh, uh, so she wasn't considering it. She already had it. Yeah, she already had it. Oh, uh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And at this time, I I was able to even, you know, uh, talk to her and, um, you know, and and I don't know whatever happened to her, but even now, even to this day, I I sometimes will think about you know I wonder whatever happened to that girl. Sure, sure. And so so you know I still I still pray for her, you know, and and that's that's kind of our lives as Christians, you know, is we 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 it, it, it's not something that just ends right here, you know, like uh you know, you know a chance meeting or whatever. Uh, you affect you affect the world like the world affects you, and uh, goodness and uh, you know love that can change the world. So we start with ourselves. And uh, ultimately, that's how I found orthodoxy myself. But uh, we can get to that later. But but getting back to working in the library, that experience, um, I was able to relate, um, you know, becoming not uh, not biased, because I can just inject my religion and preach to people. But you know, people, people are at their own pace with whatever God has for their lives. So not everyone's going to you know, be open to, to religion or to faith or anything like that. And I remember I would, um, when I was going to college, I I had a speech class. And so I had to do debates and, um, there was a great series of books. It was called opposing viewpoints. So it would take a topic like, like, let's say abortion and it would give, uh, two different viewpoints, you know, a liberal viewpoint and a conservative viewpoint. And you can, you can read both arguments and then use it. 
you know, for whatever side your speech teacher told you you should speak in. And I love this quote on the back of the book. And I've always used this as my maxim, even when it regards to the faith. And it says basically, quote, those who do not know their opponent's arguments do not necessarily understand their own. So getting back to your original question about uh, why would an Orthodox talk to a Catholic, um, I'm, I'm an open, you know, I'm, I'm all about openness and uh, learning, learning, learning Catholicism from Catholics, you know, and to, 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 to basically help me with my faith and go, well, why am I not a Catholic? You know, and, and this kind of goes back to even my eth ethnicity. You know, I'm, uh, I'm a son of immigrant Filipino parents. So, you know, growing up, but they were, um, you know, the Philippines is a very Catholic country. So, right, but right. we weren't, but my family on both sides, my grandparents on both sides, they were Protestants. So I grew up a Protestant and, uh, you know, I did my quote unquote altar call at 10 years old. You know, I remember uh, my Baptist teacher in Sunday school said, you never know, Jesus might come next week. You better go up there and, uh, you know, do your profession of faith. And I was like 10 years old. I was scared, man. I was like, <laughs> you know. And it was more, it was, it was more, actually it was more fear of going in front of the church <laughs> and being seen by people. You know, you know, you're a little kid, right? Sure, sure. Um, being seen by people the, the, rather than actually the fear of God. I mean, it, it was there, you know, the fear of God was there in, in a very seed form, I would say, now looking back. But, you know, back then, you know, as a Protestant, you know, all you had to do was do that duty. You know, just go up there and say, I accept Jesus in my heart. Bam, you're saved. You know, no, no knowledge, you know, no knowledge of, you know, that faith works through love. You know, as James tells us, you know, that, you know, we, faith without works is dead. So, but, you know, um, even that journey, even though it's not quote unquote Catholic or, you know, um, the, of, of that, of the ancient faith, I, I believe that God even used that. So we can never dismiss our journey. And that's why experience matters. And uh, I, I think this kind of segues to kind of like uh, our topic the other day. We were remember we were talking about Top Gun, Maverick, the new, right, right, the new right. movie. <laughs> so I love the scene there, and uh, I, I posted that on my Instagram, um, where Maverick, you know, he's looking old. He's, he's talking to the admiral, <laughs> <laughs> looking old with uh, Botox. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry, um, but anyways, uh, uh, he's looking at the admiral. And the admiral is saying. You should be a two-star general by now. Admiral, but you're still, yeah, 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 yeah. But you're still a captain. And then he kind of just says, kind of has that, still that maverick a attitude, you know, like, uh, you know, still has that youthful attitude, kind of basically like, oh, well. <laughs> and then, you know, the cut scene of the movie, you know, goes to that F-18 blasting off, you know, which is like, wow. You know, for us, us guys that grew up with Top Gun, you know, that's just like, whoa. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, uh, tying that in, uh, experience and um, and uh, you know we 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 we're we're a very youthful youth oriented culture, so everything new is cool, everything old is is t terrible, you know, or, or just out out of out of you know out of fad or whatever. Or but you know, in the Bible, you know, the Proverbs say, uh, I think it's in the Proverbs where. It, it talks about, uh, you know, respecting the hoary head, you know, the, the, the old, old man's gray hair. You right, know? right. And, um, you know, so, so, uh, and this is providential, man, because uh, today uh, at church, um, my, uh, my priest's homily, he, uh, he emphasized uh, this passage from uh, Proverbs, uh, where it says, uh, do not remove the ancient landmarks, which the fathers have set. And so I guess that would be, if, if I could choose a, a scripture passage on my, my, my own journey of faith is, um, you know, going back to the ancient landmarks of our faith and uh, the ancient faith, my, my search for the ancient faith, you know, um, college really kind of uh, put me in that mold. You know, um, actually, three things actually put me into uh, thinking about uh, the faith, the ancient faith is... Um, the death of my mother, and a year later, the death of my best friend, which really knocked me out, you know, like, whoa, you know, like, 
God is telling me something here. And um, uh, my, my, my best friend that died, he, even though his life was short, God had used his life as a catalyst for my faith. You know, I, I still have a, I still have a passage that he wrote down in hand, handwriting and on a sticky note from from his life. You know, and I, I still, to me, that's kind of like a relic. <laughs> you know, speaking of uh, ancient things like icons and relics, to me that's a relic of his life. To me, where he he wrote down a scripture passage about uh, whatever's good, whatever's lovely, whatever is beautiful. It's a Philippians passage, I think mm-hmm, Philippians mm-hmm. 4. Think on these things. And, you know, this this guy really will believe, you know, one day, oh, this guy would be the best man in my wedding. And it never happened, you know. But, uh, you know, it, just just that journey of faith, you know. Uh, those those little things bring brought me to where I am now. And even though, you know, I was, you know, I was Protestant, you know, it's still, I thank God for those Protestants, you know. Um you know, even that Sunday school teacher that told me to walk up the aisle and, you know, accept Jesus in my heart, you know, that those were, you know, even though it may not be, uh, you know, it, uh, like we call it heterodox, it may not be quote unquote orthodox. It's, it's still, you know, God would, you know, like Balaam, Balaam's donkey spoke, <laughs> right? you know, so, so, you know, uh, or, or I'd like to say, you know, excuse my, my uh, French here with that, but uh, if God can speak through an ass, you know, then he can talk to you. <laughs> so, sure. <laughs> so, uh, so basically, uh, that 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 kind of spurred me to to seek out the Catholic faith because uh, what I always respected about Catholics was um, I would be eating in a in a restaurant or something, and I would see someone cross themselves, mm-hmm. and I go, I go, wow, that is amazing. I can tell who a Christian is in this room right now just by by that act, you know, that sign of the cross. And so the sign of the cross is very powerful. And so I looked into it, and the more I, I, I looked into history to practice, and as I studied it, I, I also recognized that the, the West, in, in, in the Roman Catholic side, they, they go from uh, left to right. And uh, on the East, we go right to left. Right. So I, I delved further into that, and the, the more I dug, um, I saw the, the, the meanings of that. And in, in, as far as the Orthodox are concerned, uh, we have the two fingers, the pinky finger and the ring finger touching your palm. And then you have the three fingers, your thumb, the index, and the middle finger together. And um, it's so full of theology. I didn't realize this. You know, most people that don't know just look at it and go, oh, he's just showing his piety. But the, the two fingers down meant the two natures of Christ, the mm-hmm. incarnation. And uh, the three fingers was uh, the Trinity, which was like, right. wow. You know, and as Protestants, we, we seriously lacked this, this beauty, this beauty of even that simple act. And so that was kind of my, um, my genesis of uh, searching further. But because I was a Protestant, I was afraid, you know, we, in Protestantism, there was this thing about Scripture alone. Yep. And, uh, and Romo, uh, we, uh, like an, another priest calls it romophobia. <laughs> and, now, and, and that's not fear of uh, Romo from the Dallas Cowboys, is it? Uh, I, I guess it could be if you're a football fan. <laughs> 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 but um, meaning, you know, for Rome, uh, a phobia of anything that smacks of what looks like a Roman practice. Right. Which, which you know, um, uh, but... I respected that. I highly respected that out of the, my Roman Catholic brothers and sisters. And uh, so as I, I looked into that, but I wasn't quite ready. And again, it's, 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 this, it's this journey of faith. You know, you're not quite ready, you know, and it, it, it is a journey. I mean, you can't, and especially in our culture, uh, we want, we want, you know, like the tie-in is like with video games, right? We want the cheat codes. We want, we want the extra lives, you know? But but no the the the, the practice of, of of what the Greeks call eschesis is 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 you know uh, a struggle you know and uh, that struggle with prayer and uh, uh, and and there was this verse in um, the scriptures that I I never understood and it it, it says basically uh, the kingdom of heaven is taken by violence and the violent take it by force. And uh, I never understood that. You know, it's like, why did Jesus say that? Why, why is that in there? And uh, a, uh, a bishop uh, 
an Orthodox bishop explained what that means, and it's basically the the struggle to to take the kingdom of heaven is yours yours, and uh, you have to struggle with a violent act, meaning uh, like your prayer, you know, to 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 pray fervently, you know, the Jesus prayer, uh, you, you you do it with force because your enemy, the devil, fights with violence, but you have to fight with stronger violence. Uh, violence on yourself, violence to your, to to break your 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 mold, you know, you know, uh, break your flesh, and to 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 struggle struggle into uh, getting into a life of prayer and fasting. So um, so in that um, that realm, that's kind of where I was at. So I wasn't quite prepared to go full on Catholic on the Catholic side or Orthodox. I was just kind of studying it. So my journey brought me back to 1517. Uh, you know, I, I had been going to various Baptist churches, uh, Pentecostal movements. You know, uh, I'd like to I like to uh, make a joke about it and call it. Uh, I dabbled into Pentecostalism for a while. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, like are you doing cartwheels and stuff? Is that what you mean by dabbling? <laughs> oh yeah, man. I mean, uh, holy I, rolling, I to, holy rolling, man. But this was uh, this was before the uh, the uh, animal barking that was in the late nineties. I was oh clear. Yes, I have not heard about yeah. that one. I'll have yeah, to there was Google. a John Wimber John Wimber <laughs> movement. Uh, there was a movement. So, so ask me anything about <laughs> Protestantism, and I, I could probably tell you. A lot about it. So, uh, but I went um, basically going to a Baptist church. You know, you you had the it was a congregational type of government ecclesiology. So basically, you have a pastor, and and basically the the church votes votes on who who the pastor would be. You know, uh, the authority is in the people. But uh, if you see it, it's a very analogous to uh, American government. You know, our, our, after all, American government was founded by mainly Protestants. You know, sure, so, sure. so uh, Congress, right? <laughs> and they can't get their act together. Well, there you have it. That's why you have uh, splintering of uh, denominations. You know, because as soon as one half of the, and I, I've been through this. I remember in my Filipino ethnic churches. You know, we. Uh, we would get into there would be a family feud and some one family would take half of the congregation with them and start a new church, <laughs> you know, and that's yeah, that's yeah, it's terrible. So um, but, you know, I, I was I was still in that within that framework. So it wasn't offensive to me in, in the sense of like how I see uh, Catholics in their debates with Protestants, you know, that's a scandal to them. But, you know, when you're within that group, um you know, you're, it's not, you know, you, you're, you, it's like being born into your religion or being, you know, like Muslims are born in a religion. They're not, they're not scandalized by it, you know, even though Americans can point it out, you know, so, so that, that, that's part of also why um, getting back to um, knowing your opponent's arguments, it's really studying someone else's point of view, because if, you know, we, we can, we always project from within or from our, ourselves, our beliefs, you know, because of our experiences. My experiences are mine. Your experiences are yours. And it's always within this framework, you know, with, behind these rose-colored glasses that we all each have. And so my my whole thing was always – I always played devil's advocate, I guess, in a sense, you know. And some people say, oh, how dare you, you know. <laughs> but, but, you know, really, I mean – why am I not an atheist? You know, I mean, I I really went through these these kind of kind of issues. You know, I studied philosophy and I, I I wanted to know these things. So, so it's it's really good to study it because you know what? If if the Lord is truly the Lord, He will lead you to 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 Himself. You know, right. like the ninety nine the ninety nine sheep, right? He He leads the ninety nine to get the one. <laughs> and I love that icon. You know, where He He has the He has a sheep right behind His neck and. Same thing, you know, he will, he will, he will bring you, you know, so, you know, if we trust in God to, to save us, you know, so um, that to me is the ultimate uh, thing. But, but going back to, uh, I, I went back on my journey to 1517 and became, a ref um, well, basically I, I studied the Reformation. And so uh, I, I stayed there for a while. I was, um, and I, I, it was the debates between the, the Calvinists, the Zwinglians, and the Lutherans. You know, basically they became three factions, and and it all revolved around uh, infant baptism, and uh, you know, <laughs> which is another you know, you know, it's it, it's just these rabbit holes that just keep going, you know, with the with the faith, you know, 
But um, ultimately, um, I was a Baptist, so it, uh, it was all about adult adult baptisms, no infant baptism. You know, we, we didn't allow that. So for a while, I became a um, – so between the choices of uh, Lutheranism or uh, the Reformed movement under, under Calvin or the Anabaptists, I, I chose – the, the, uh, well, it was kind of a – I call it a pseudo, pseudo-reformed pseudo view. These were Calvinist Baptists, basically, you know, uh, basically that took the Westminster Confession of Faith, which was a uh, Presbyterian. Right. But but they just threw out, they just threw out the, uh, the in, infant baptism, <laughs> you know, modified form. Well, you got to pick and choose, right? That's how it yeah. is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, – all in all, you know, I look back and God was still with me in that journey, you know, and then um, eventually I would uh, I would tr- explore Lutheranism. But the uh, his 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 view of the Lord's Supper was just a weird uh, just a weird uh, conundrum of trying to reinterpret the Rome Roman view. And uh, I, I couldn't accept that. So uh, I was still in a, this memorialist view, you know, but as as I'm progressing in the in 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 my faith there i eventually lose i lose uh i lose the infant baptism part or i mean i lose the adult baptism part and and move to the dutch reformed so i i became dutch reformed and uh when i got sprinkled baptism <laughs> you know just a little bit of water and um i really thought that i would stay in that faith for the rest of my life you know, I thought that was it. You know, I I, I thought I finally quote unquote arrived. <laughs> you know, I, I read Calvin's Institutes. Uh, I, you know, uh, I had all my arguments down against uh, you know Rome. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, eventually uh, a few years later, uh, one of my good friends in in the church converts to become a Roman Catholic, and it blew me away. And so uh, I start talking to. The, you know, and he left the church, and, and then a year later, uh, we re, we reunite, and I said, "Hey, so are you still Catholic, man?" And he goes, "No, I'm Eastern Orthodox." And I was like floored. I was like, "Wait a minute, man, what are you doing?" <laughs> I go, "You're going backwards," you know. And you know, from the perspective of Protestant, you know, that's going backwards, right? You're you're going back in time <laughs> when, when everything, you know, the, the enlightenment quote unquote was 1517, right? That that's where we, <laughs> we stop. But, um, I, I love Cardinal, Cardinal Newman's, uh, quote basically, right? It says, uh, those who are, uh, deep in history, uh, cease to be Protestant. Right. So my curiosity really, piqued me to to search this and so i would ask him questions and we would talk about it and he would tell me about his journey and uh, so i just kept asking him questions and then uh, he said hey uh go listen to this podcast called uh, our life in christ and uh, you know we'll, um and then they were talking about icons and relics and it was just like whoa you know this is you know stuff that's very scandalous to a protestant you know so working backwards to that it uh it brought me to that part. And then um, I don't know if you're familiar with Yaroslav Pelikan. He's a famous um, Yale uh, Yale church historian. He was a Lutheran for the longest time. And then uh, he had, a, I guess in a sense, a deathbed uh, conversion because uh, he, he became Orthodox. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, there's a quote from him saying basically like he said, I had the greatest knowledge of Luther uh, I had the greatest knowledge of Luther as a his, historian, and I'm roughly paraphrasing this. Sure, sure, sure. But, uh, but now I am orthodox with the uh, greatest knowledge of Luther, or something like that. It, it, it it's a really cl- clever quote, and it's just like whoa, you know, and just you know, to 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 see a scholar and a theologian make that conversion, you know, that to me is like, well, this guy this guy knows history, you know, so. So that really was kind of what spurred me to 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 the east, and um, and I think it's relatively new. And the internet, the internet, kind of helped bring that, you know, um, because in America, you know, we're we're exposed, we're Western culture, you know, America's Western, you know, and you know, coming from Europe and the history of it, and you know, Russia and the USSR, the, the fall of the USSR, I think, really kind of helped spur 
the East to to come to us, you know. And uh, again, going back to my uh, previous employer, you know, former, you know, Yugoslavian prime minister, he was Serbian, so he was Serbian Orthodox. So um, I, I kind of find it funny because I was, you know, just kind of poo-pooing that those photos of those uh, those uh, patriarchs, and then here I am, you know, <laughs> come around full circle and. I'm like, well, eating my own words. And even, even in my journey with the, the Virgin Mary, you know, I, I, I even cross myself today, you know, uh, Lord, forgive me for, uh, you know, disdaining the, the mother of God. You know, I, I used to as a Protestant, but, but, you know, we, in a sense, they, they don't know any better. They were, they were born into that, you know, kind of like a Muslim born into their religion, you know? So, so in a sense, us that now that are on the other side of, of the Protestant spectrum, you know, we, we, we need to have grace on them. I think, you know, and I, I find sometimes uh, there's too much of this convertitis. I call it convertitis, you know, especially the Protestant converts are really rabid. <laughs> you know, they, they found the faith, you know, and it's like, dude, chill, relax, you know. <laughs> and I think it's just age, you know. Um, you know, when you're young, you're, you know, you're 20 years old, you, you got a lot of energy, you know, you're, you know, you know especially guys, you know, testosterone's like going full bore. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we, we, we learn something new and we think we incorporate it and we think, bam, you know, I know everything now, but no, you know, life, life will hit you. And, um, just life experience will, you know, show you that, uh, you know, like video games, it's time to level up brother. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you on that one. And that's one of the things that I found interesting with what you said was, um, you know, East and West. And for me, I, I so I got deployed to the Middle East and what was really yeah. interesting over there was I got to meet, you know, not Eastern Orthodox, but Catholics. And when I say yeah. Catholics, I mean like straight up Eastern old, old, Catholics. Old world, old school Catholics. Yeah, yes. but like pre, pre schism, pre schism, pre schism <laughs> Catholics. But nevertheless, like just plain old Catholics. Like for me, I don't even really mention Roman Catholic because to me, it's just Catholic. We sh we are one. It's the same Eucharist. If it's the same yeah. Eucharist, we should be able to sit at the sit at the table of the banquet we should be able to worship at the altar of sacrifice because it's the same christ and the tough part Amen. for me that Amen. just like really tugs at my heartstrings is the fact that we find these silly things to to split us apart and so i just remember western civilization class from from back in college and we were talking really about you what, too that that was a, that that's funny you mentioned that because that that was my catalyst for my search. <laughs> but go ahead. Oh, sorry, I, no, I no, no, no. Interrupt it, your your. <laughs> it just to me it just seemed like a petty squabble, like a political squabble that happened in the, you know, ten hundreds. I, I want to say ten twenty four, ten fifteen. I don't know random numbers. So sometimes in the tens, it seemed like folks were just, you know, spitting haterade at each other, over. Yeah. You know, silly things. When I say silly, I don't mean like they're, you know, purely petty because there was one where during the Crusades, I guess some folks raided Constantinople, even though they were supposed to go on to Jerusalem and kick yeah, the, the Mohammedans the fourth, out. The Fourth Crusade was uh, pretty lamentable. Um, nuns were raped, literally. Right. On the and, altar of, and, that, and that's terrible stuff. But like, you know, yeah. like whether or not the filioque and all these other things that really when you boil it down, when you peel that onion back. We still actually believe the same thing, so much so that if I – when we when we were deployed and they said, if you can't find a Catholic church, it's okay to receive the Eucharist at the Eastern Orthodox because their sacraments are valid. And um, – Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, 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 the, that's Rome's position. But it's funny because uh, if you talk to some, uh, some online uh, – I, I call them – yeah, you know, we're about the same age. So, um, I call them online jockeys, you know, like, uh, you know, that, that just the keyboard warriors, you know, they, you know, they read a, they read a, a wiki article or something, or they find a position that's similar to theirs on a website. They, they automatically just blow up, blow away. Like I, I remember one time some guys basically told me I was going to hell because I, I wasn't in the Roman church, <laughs> which was like, whoa, you know, wait a minute. Um, St. Peter you know, if, if we, you know, even if I take your position uh, that he is, you know, the, the Western position of, uh, you know, being the, the first pope, uh, even he wrote the, 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 the stone, the living stone, which is the chief's corner, you know, chief cornerstone is who? Christ. And that's ultimately, you know, what God will judge us is how we, you know, how do we 
how do we take care of the widows, the poor, you know, the the downcast, you know, um, and and as far as theological degrees and all that stuff, I mean, yeah, it is important, but you know, even the even the demons believe in shudder, you know. I mean, who has the best theological degree of all? Satan, man. I mean, he was in heaven as an angel, right? And you know, pride brought him down. So, so I find this like uh, this pervasive uh, pride that's uh, going around, you know, and it's, it's sad. I mean, uh, you know, it, it, we need to, I guess, just kind of reexamine things and uh, be open to to reading other other works. And and uh, I love what my priest says. You know, try to find a book that's, that has "St." in front of the author's name. So you can't go wrong if it's a saint that you're reading. You know, so you know, read read Chrysostom. You know, read uh, read uh, Saint Gregory, Saint Basil the Great. You know, those those. You know, that then you'll know what what the ancient faith is. You know. <laughs> so for me, so, I'm gonna. Yeah, sorry, I'm gonna, sorry. No, yeah. no, no. You're fine. Yeah. You're fine. So for yeah. me, I'm gonna make sure that it's unambiguous my position. So my position, you know, the Catholic Church is the one true faith. It's the surest and most direct way for salvation. But at the same time, like if I if I wanted to evangelize you, and I'm not saying that I, I don't or I'm not already, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it by slamming your head against the wall and, you know, yelling deus volt, deus volt. That, that's not the <laughs> yeah. way evangelization yeah. works. No, and so no. our conversation naturally went from the things that we have in common. Like you said that we're around the same age. So what are the things that we grew up with? Karate Kid. I want to say that we talked yes. about Karate Kid. I, we grew which up with I enjoyed, all kinds way, of stuff. I, which I, by the way, I enjoyed your episode. And I'm telling all the listeners right now, listen to that Cobra Kai episode. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good episode. Second season yeah. was pretty good too. Although I will say the second season introduced some uh, socially risque topics that I was like, I don't uh, know that that adds <laughs> anything, but whatever. Well, we can we can talk about that too because uh, there, that that's another aspect of my journey that I'd like to share. But but anyways, go ahead, go ahead. Um, yeah, sorry. No, no, you're good, man. So like, yeah, so we talk about things that we have in common because for me, argumentation that's maybe one aspect of apologetics. But for yeah. me, my position with Peter being the first pope, I'm just gonna make my I would just make my position, and. You know, people can win arguments by virtue of just being a better, better arguer, but yeah, that doesn't yeah. make what they said actually true. They're just <laughs> really good at selling cars. That's that's what yeah, it boils yeah, down yeah. to. So, yeah, you know, let your life be a testimony, and let your words speak the speak the actions of your life. So that's what it boils down to for me. And you know, one of these and, days, and we can't we can't stop. We can't say that we've arrived. Because our life is lifelong, right? Um, I mean, if if I look back, you know, 20 years ago, I would have never thought I'd be Eastern Orthodox. I mean, I would have said to myself, you know, like, dude, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? It's, and so we don't know our life journey that the Lord will bring us to. And you know, these are what seem like detours to us in this in this horizontal timeline. It's nothing to God, you know. Like, uh, like one of the He's in the eternal the, present. Yes, yes, He is the I Am. You know, um, he is the eternal present. Yes. And we we get hung up on the past or the future. But really, Christ wants us to be like Mary, uh, Martha's sister, to be at his feet. You know, we have today and today is what we have and we, we live, live for it and for Christ, you know, and, you know, tomorrow we may not have tomorrow. You know, I I recently just had two precious people die. I literally uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had two funerals Friday and Saturday back to back. I mean, death is around us, and uh, I don't wish this on anyone. Like my experience of, of these deaths, I mean, I lost my mom first. That was like the hardest. I still, I still deal with that. But you know what? Even that, God, God used that to bring me here. You know, so I thank God even for that. You know, I, I lost a mother, but I gained a the heavenly mother. You know, uh, the most holy Theotokos. You know, so uh, and even that, you know, I wouldn't have not have gone to grasp that. If my mom didn't die, you know, I, I'd probably be still a Baptist, you know, or evangelical, you know, just not disrespecting the, the mother of God, you know. So if that makes sense, I hope so, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Here, and for me, so I'm writing a book, right? And spoiler alert, the gist, oh, nice. of, yeah, the gist of the book, hey, it's, it's a hey, two-part book. I did, 
let, let me just tell you, I, I did catalog production. I, I sent you my, uh, I, I did, I, I, sh- I showed you some of my things. So if you need a book cover, brother, uh, let me know, man. I, I can, I can do it. <laughs> nice. I, I, I might take you up on that whenever I do get yeah. to finish it. But I will like, totally help you on that. <laughs> so the, uh, it's going to be a two, um, a two part series. The first one is called body and blood. And the second one is called soul and divinity. But the gist of it is again, spoiler alert. Um, Whenever people get on this trip about, you know, like nailing another cross, making Christ suffer some more or or insulting our blessed mother. Here, here's what I think of it. Like if someone am I really going to rend my garments and pluck my beard, a beard that I can't <laughs> grow very well? Am I really going to like try and punch this person um, or do some sort of violence to this person? When for me, if my blessed mother you know, if the Blessed Mother was standing right beside me and this person was, like, spitting on her. For me, like, the most beautiful image that comes close was when Mother Teresa was spat upon when she was yeah. trying to procure some bread for this, uh, you know, homeless homeless girl that she was taking care of. And she said, in, instead of, like, insulting back or saying, how dare you, she said, thank you for that. Now bread for the girl. Wow. For me... It's one of those things to where my mother can take care of herself. Like yeah. she's she's literally the the epitome of a superwoman. The yes, superwoman. Yes. Oh, so like yeah. if anyone was gonna like insult her, this, that, and the other, I'm pretty sure that, you know, in her she could it, take it. Yeah, she'd be like, shake it off, shake it off. Well, she'd like tay tay well, that. Well, you you're familiar with this I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, icon of the seven swords. That uh, it shows the the mother of God with seven swords, piercing her heart, right, 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 towards her heart. If she can take the death of the Son of God, you know, then you know, yeah, you're right. There, there's nothing that, you know, I mean, a mother's loss of a child is like the ultimate pain, you know. But she was able to endure that, you know. And that but and that's the thing is like, I as even... we're coming up to the to the Dormition here <laughs> on August fifteenth, which is pretty interesting and so that's the (laughs) that's the thing that for me whenever people like say for example sacrilege is not a good thing but sacrilege doesn't hurt god sacrilege doesn't hurt the saints sacrilege hurts the person committing sacrilege amen amen and and that that, that, that's what i was referring to is like me you know like i i hurt that i ever did that in the past you know but but yes uh, even that is not something that i I can beat myself up for, you know, but yeah, you're, you're totally correct on that. Like, you know, and that's the thing is that she's, you know, when it comes to the faith, what it boils down to is being able to have, and and I, and I get it. Some people, they're like, man, talk is cheap and talk is cheap, but what we're doing right here, this, this relationship that we're developing, this friendship, this camaraderie that we're developing right here, you know, for me, I'm going to pray, you know, Seven times a day times seven that, you know, like our conversation is going to help you come home to Rome. That's that's what I, <laughs> for me anyways, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be more united with you. We're already brothers in Christ by virtue of the sacraments. But how much more so when we can actually sit at the exact same table without having to go left and right, without having to go east and west and just focusing on Christ instead of all these other things that divide us. So for yeah. me, that's that's the biggest part. And, and and that's like the resolution to every video game, the resolution to every movie, the resolution to all the things that we enjoyed is that the hero wins. And we're supposed yes. to try to be the hero for each other. We're supposed yes. to go on this rescue mission for each other. And we're not going to do that very well if we keep on telling the people that we're rescuing, you know, I'm going to stab you first. And yeah. don't worry, it's a healing sword uh, I mean, like, it. I don't know yeah. how that sells. And yeah. so for me... Well, 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 we see it enough in, in... Just look at social media. Look at the mess of social media. I mean, I, I, I pretty much scroll now. I mean, I follow things just to keep up with stuff. But, man, I, I pretty much just keep scrolling because, like, just the news, man. I mean, you don't, we don't even know... We don't even know half of that news if it's even real, you know, if it's not been Photoshopped like a meme. <laughs> you know, it's been crazy, you know. But... but participation uh that, that's the essential thing love love is participation that, that, that's why god is a trinity you know like this is where the muslims cannot understand this god is a trinity you know did god need did, did god god is love right that, that's what the scriptures say god is love so before he created man 
was he love? The answer is yes. Well, how do you love if you don't have another person there? He's but, a community of persons, yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a tri trinity of persons, and that that even shows more the the truth that he is a person, and and that's how we need to 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 relate to people. I mean, we have social media; it's good, and we get to meet people. But man, I, I tell you, um, I, I I went to my first uh, Byzantine Catholic um, service uh, at uh, San Diego. Byzantine Catholic meaning like straight up Catholic Catholic. Yes. Uh, well, Byzantine so yeah, Eastern, Eastern Rite Catholic. Catholic? Eastern Rite Catholic. I right went, I on. Went on. I went on Easter. You know, okay, I'm Orthodox, but you know what? I said, you know what? I just want to learn how they practice the faith, you know? Sure, sure. And um, uh, I don't know if we're common friends on Instagram. Josh Mangles uh, met his, him and his family, and it was beautiful. You know, I mean, they, they had this Chrysostom liturgy, you know, but of course they, they pray to the they also they also pray for the Pope in, in there. In, that, that, that was the difference. But, you know, uh, I'm I'm working my way to to also you know visit other you know I want to I want to visit a uh, Novo Sordo I want to visit a uh, no Latin don't Mass do that or... don't do no. that <laughs> really like really? not really? not and I'm not dogging well, just... because I I am obviously okay. I attend Novo okay. Sordo but if you're coming from Eastern Orthodox and if you've you know attended a Byzantine Rite Mass you're gonna think that Be you were back well <laughs> oh. maybe probably I don't know like so here's the but thing you know right. I, when it comes like, to the Novus Ordo, yeah, they it's it's almost like attending a Protestant service in in its trappings. Jesus is still yeah. there. The Eucharist is still celebrated, but it's okay. just a lot harder to focus on yeah. on um, on it because the liturgy doesn't lend itself well necessarily. Yeah. I mean, like you would probably be able to 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 you know, sift through all that, but it'd be work. I mean, like for me, whenever yeah. I attend a, a Novus Ordo Mass, which is often, well, there's yeah. so much work and and an extra and um, exertion of effort to just go. This is the sacrifice of the lamb. This is the lamb supper, the wedding banquet. You know, yes, they're playing drums and yes, they're playing <laughs> acoustic guitar and yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. But it's it's modern. It's it's postmodernism in, in the church. It's, but basically, it's, they're, they're they're trying to. I, I my understanding of it, uh, the way I see it, is they're they're trying to. Well, well, because the, the uh, religion in America is dying. I mean, the, the surveys show it. You know, the Christian religion, at least, uh, in the sense of like, uh, um, they have a, a group called the nuns. N o n. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know, this is this, and I think it's the millennial. I don't know if it's a millennial or Gen Z type thing but but they're abandoning that faith and 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 that's that was like the testimony of my priest you know he he was he was a pro, a protestant reformed protestant that uh you know he he asked himself you know will my children have the same faith as me you know when they grow up and so that was my dilemma you know i thought i was going to die a calvinist <laughs> you know but god had other plans for me you know and um the more you see that that's why there's a strong i think there's a strong reaction with the 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 faithful youth to be uh into the latin mass yes know, but so i would suggest if you wanted to see the latin rite represented well in liturgy go to an fssp uh okay. latin mass that uh, tridentine rite mass that way you can see what uh, the liturgy and 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 again this isn't just from the external again i i'm assuming that you know by how we've talked why we're there, why, what what we're doing yeah. and why we're doing it, not just, you know, you know, I'm going to go through the motions and these motions look beautiful. It goes beyond that. If, you know, you can really yeah. truly see the beauty of, uh, yeah. of you know. Now, now let me liturgy. ask you, have you been to a divine liturgy? Have you been to a Orthodox divine liturgy? I have not. I've watched it on uh, YouTube. I was planning on maybe attending one when we were in um, – Okay, a country. If you have planned, uh, when I was in if Turkey, you ever, if you ever come down to California, let me know. I'll invite you to Riverside, St. Andrews Orthodox Church, uh, Seven Dome Byzantine style church. Uh, you must go to a divine liturgy there. All right. In and, fact, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to get you I'll, I'll try to get you. Uh, we have a CD of of the uh, 
the whole service, uh, the music. The music, man, is, is heaven on earth, brother. It's it's pretty amazing. But uh, I'll send you a copy. So. All right, so if I ever do visit you yeah. in, in return, well, you're uh, also going to go I'll, with I'll, me to a Tridentine yes, Rite Mass. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I, and this is, this, is, this is how we learn from each other, you know? I mean, you know, we can read a book about it, but... but oh, speaking of Karate Kid, let me bring, the, let me bring Mr. Miyagi's uh, line. Do you remember after, he, uh, after um, uh, Daniel san got beat up and then he, he was in his house and he was looking at a book and he was doing karate, karate moves, you know, practicing, right? To, All right. You know? And then Miyagi walks in and he goes, you know learn karate from book. So that's right, man. In the, in the same way, it's the faith, man. It's, it's participation. It's, 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 it's being in liturgy. You know, that's why, that's why even, um, you know, you could, yeah, uh, that's why my priest, you know, says, you know, don't, you know, don't, don't post this stuff online. I mean, you know, just, just put a live event and, and, that, and, you know, people think, oh, I'm, I'm watching a live event of a liturgy and I'm in it, you know, no, no be at church, you know, be there, participate, you know, smell the incense, you know, you can't smell incense on, on an Instagram live, <laughs> you know, You're probably I mean? not going to smell in much incense at a Nova Sordo mass either. <laughs> Tridentine, right? But oh, okay. Okay. So yeah. it, it's, so it's a, li- literally it's a paper for my, it's the dissertation that I'm working on. Um, I'll talk more about it, about that yeah, in a later yeah, episode, yeah. but anyways, well, so well, we've gotten to the part of the show, believe it or not, brother, where we're going to have to start wrapping up. So if you have any saved rounds or parting shots, now is the time. So if there's one thing that you wanted our listeners to walk away with this episode, what is it? And uh, and I'll give you the floor. Okay. Um, what I would like to leave is, um, you know, uh, even though I came from uh, uh, Sola Scriptura and uh, this Protestant uh, idea of Christianity, uh, I, I thank God for, for that. So uh, I leave everyone a scripture that uh, is near and dear to my heart. Uh, dear friends, this is from Jude 3. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's saints. So I leave that Jude 3. You know, uh, our faith once for all delivered to uh, to the saints. Awesome. And, uh, there are there are those ahead of us. You know, they they, they paved the way and uh, the ancient landmarks. And all we need to do is just cross that river, the the Red Sea. You know, Moses, like as Moses opened it up. You know, we we need to go there, but we need to go there. We need to walk. It's it's not something that you just read a book about and say, hey, I've arrived. You know, you, you don't sit at the edge of Egypt. You you cross Egypt. And go into the promised land. I'm so that's my prayer. Man. That's my prayer for everybody. You know, salvation once for all delivered. Sounds good, brother. And that, folks, uh, I tell you what, that hour went by quick. And this music is our cue, letting us know that we're out of time for this week's episode of Fire Away, brought to you by Catholic Ammo. Many thanks to all who are listening, and special thanks to our guest. Robert Lira. Thank you so much, brother, for your time. And thank you. Brother. I know you're going to be joining us again because we did not even tip or, <laughs> you know, nick the tip of the iceberg. So, for a quick recap on episode 51, we broke the mold. Finally, 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 I have someone who is not uh, Catholic as I am Catholic, and most of us are Catholic. But that's okay because you know what? I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray just to make it today. AKA, you know, like, you know, thank you, St. MC Hammer. Um, <laughs> so, but before we finish, let's go ahead and bow our heads in a closing prayer. And Rob, if you'd do us the honors again. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. O Lord, O Lord, our God, good and merciful, I acknowledge all my sins, which I have committed every day of my life, in thought, word, and deed, in body and soul alike. I'm heartily sorry that I have ever offended thee, and I sincerely repent. With tears I humbly pray thee, O Lord, of thy mercy forgive me all my past transgressions and absolve me from them. I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to amend my way of life and sin no more, and that I may walk in the way of the righteous and offer praise and glory in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. For more thought-provoking, soul-enriching content, 
Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under at Catholic Ammo. Again, that's at Catholic Ammo. And be sure to check out more Fire Away at WCATradio.com forward slash Fire Away. This is your host, Carlos Bursaban. Until next Friday or whenever I can squeeze an episode in, keep mission focused and stay locked, loaded, and ready. Failure is not an option. Bye bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye bye. We hope you enjoyed the program and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafut. Good day. <laughs>